Hello, hello, it's Joe from Nerd in Korea. We are starting our pre-con upgrade week. I'm doing all my episodes in weeks now because it seems like the algorithm likes that better. So, um, this is all about caves. So if you don't know about caves, they're a land subtype. And they're very underrated, I think. So here we go. So what is budget? For this video, I'm saying under $1. So very, very budget. Usually I say under $2 is under $1. I'm using the TCG market value. Not a sponsor. Not at all. Okay, so I, last week I did uh, videos on some of the confluences and one that I covered had the Cosmium Confluence. I'll see if I can remember to put that video in the in the corner there. But yeah, this uh, this is only five mana. You get three effects for five mana. Already pretty good. One of them destroy target enchantment, so you can destroy three enchantments for five mana. Cool oh boy. The other option that stood out to me is search your library for a card, or sorry, a cave card, put it into the battle, or, or sorry, onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. So for five mana, you can go get three lands and put them in tapped. Even for green, that's pretty good, especially when they're really good lands. Number five, promising vein. So this is again a cave, so you can tap to add a colorless, meh, and for one mana, sacrifice Promising Vein, search the library for a basic land card, put it onto the battlefield tapped, then shuffle. Your basic mana fixing type of land, this is always a nice option to have. This isn't why you want caves though, right? It's alright, it's um, you want to put at least three caves in if you're doing the Cosmium Confluence, so this is a good one to consider if you have a multicolored deck. Seven cents. Number four, uh, dowsing device. So you might say, hey, Joe, that's not a cave, that's an artifact. Yeah, it, it, it is, you're right. So one in a red, whenever a uh, dowsing device or another artifact enters the battlefield under your control, up to one target creature you control gets plus one, plus zero, and gains haste until end of turn. So just an extra ETB for all of your artifacts, and this doesn't care if it's non-token or token, whatever it is. Then transform dowsing device if you control four or more artifacts. Four is not a high bar. Even if you're not playing like an artifact matters deck, you can get four pretty easily. Even this counts itself, and three treasures, done. Three clues, done, whatever, but yeah. And here we go. Dio Grotto is what it transforms into. You can tap it to add a red. So it's nice to have a colored mana. Or for two and a red, tap it until end of turn. Target creature gains haste and gets plus X plus zero, where X is the number of artifacts you control. Activate only as a sorcery. Oh boy. So you can just like give this massive boost based on the number of artifacts. This part is an Artifact Matters deck kind of thing, right? I have this in my Sahili the Gifted deck, and yeah, it's just gonna give you this huge boost in power, even if you're going for like commander damage, you know? You can probably get that done in like one activation of this. Um, having just like, between, remember, you can have artifacts, token artifacts, artifact creatures, between those three, you're going to have a pretty good number. Anyway, 26 cents. Number three. Echoing Deeps. Okay, so this is again a cave, which all they all are, but anyway. You may have it enter the battlefield tapped as a copy of any land card in a graveyard, except it's a cave in addition to its other types. You can tap it for a colorless. So, the tricky bit here is, you need some kind of land destruction. Um, a little bit of land destruction, focused land destruction is okay, I think. Um, some people get really upset about land destruction. If you're doing like mass land destruction, I agree. That's, don't do that. If you're like, destroying that Cabal Coffers, yep, fair, totally fair. And uh, also, if you can like, get something to the graveyard, you can just make a copy of it. 
this includes your own, right? So if you got something where you can like put a land into the graveyard and play it back out from the graveyard, put it into the graveyard, play this, make this a copy of that, and then pull that back out of the graveyard. No problem, right? Very, very abusable. Anyway, 77 cents. Number two. <clears throat> Sunken Palace. Okay, so this one enters the battlefield tapped. Mm. It taps for a blue, which is kind of nice. And for one in a blue, exile seven cards from your graveyard. So you need to like have some kind of mill or something to be able to take advantage of that easily. But anyway, uh, add a blue. When you spend this mana to cast a spell or activate an ability, so a spell or activate an ability... Gives you choices there. Choices are so powerful. Copy that spell or ability. You may choose new tar targets for the copy. Oh. Especially the fact that you can do it on spell or ability. This does require setup, but that kind of like getting value out of things in your graveyard. That's just like something every deck should have. You should have some way to get like secondary value. Even if you're not like doing a lot of recursion and putting things back into your hand or back in the battlefield from the graveyard, you should get some kind of value out of your graveyard, right? You might as well, it's there. Um, it's like refuse to use mana, but anyway. Yeah, copying abilities or spells. Just super, super good. 24 cents. Number one. I've actually talked about this one before. Pit of Offerings. Uh, it's offerings, offering, but anyway, okay. Ho, 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 ho. This is insane. Um, this is like, I think maybe pound for pound the best card you can get from recent years. Um, the best land, anyway, in recent years. I shouldn't say card, but 12 cents only. Okay, let's read it. <clears throat> it enters... <coughs> Great. My wife still has me sick. Um, it enters tapped. Um, <clears throat> so, boy. When it when it enters the battlefield, exile up to three target cards from graveyards. So you can do three cards from one graveyard. You can do three cards from three different graveyards. You can exile one card from your own graveyard and then two cards from other whatever you want. So you can tap it to add a colorless, or tap to add one mana of any exiled card's color. Oh, you're exiling three cards. Even if you exile three or two cards that are uh, dual colored and one card that's mono color, you could potentially get Wooburg just doing that. We're not even including there are cards that are like three color cards, and like you could do three two color cards. Like, there's so many ways to get to like just every possible color combination you can need um i actually i don't think i have this in my wooberg deck yet i just ordered a bunch of them because they're 12 cents okay this is i i said this before um in my last uh yeah deck check-in video this is a graveyard hate mana fixing land that can potentially make any color of mana you need to make mana for your deck. Great. Exile something from your own graveyard. And boom. You're set. Or, uh, hey, if someone has a, shares a color with you, exile theirs instead. And even better. You got that recursion player getting, causing trouble? Um, exile their stuff. Hey. Great. And yeah. You can exile any kind of card. It doesn't care what type of card. Just, it's a card. That's it. <clears throat> You could potentially exile three lands and it would only tap for color or less then, but still, it's an option, right? Whew. Graveyard hates mana fixing land. 12 cents only. Promising Bane, 7 cents. Housing Device, 26 cents. Echoing Deep, 77 cents. Duncan Palace is 24 cents. And finally, Pit of Offering, 12 cents. Take it easy.